Hello everyone, and welcome back to Sunless Skies. I'm G, and there's Chorister Bees up here. Fuck, I hate Chorister Bees. Uh, as you may uh, have been aware, we are going through... Ooh. Uh, we're going through the northeast section of the map. Uh, the region's tiers. It is said that the lakes at the top of the region's tiers have curative properties. This rumor goes largely unconfirmed. The ground by the lakes is too boggy to land a locomotive. Instead, you must lie on a sharp, slippery ledge lower down the falls. The walk up will be punishing. Follow the guide up to the top of the tiers. 100% chance of success. Nice. A hood woman half concealed in the spray waste by the waterfall. You are here for the region's lakes. She has a thick London accent. Up is without pause. The woman leaps from ledge to foothold. She is sheer footed, apparently oblivious to the thundering roar of the waterfalls. It is treacherous work to keep up with her. When you finally reach the top, you help each other over the edge. Only now can you see that she's crying. She has wept endlessly for years. The tears run down grooves in her cheeks that have been worn there by the constant weeping. She gestures towards the water. Welcome. May the region's lakes nourish you. The view from the top of the tears is dizzying. The forest is so large and you are so high that all perspective is lost. Only your locomotive, small as a matchbox, breaks the illusion of a mossy meadow inches from your feet. You step back from the drop and turn to the lake. It is huge. You cannot make it any details of its far shore. Steam rises sluggishly from the surface. The water is warm. Ooh. I want to do it. It is stupid. Success! Nice! The profoundest melancholy. The water is as hot as a freshly drawn bath. The constant drum of the rushing waters drowns out even your thoughts. You should be relaxed. You should be considering the magnificence of the reach. Emerald green. Cathedraled with branches, soaring like buttresses. But how can you? You are alone. Reach's glory has fallen into darkness and shall not rise again. What can be left? With effort, you climb from the water to lie on the bank, sobbing. Oh. Fucking... Jeez. And I leveled! Very nice! Alright, let's take a facet. I have a spell in prison. The Great Game. Steam and Soot. A Metamorphosis. Smuggy Streets. Um... Hmm. Not sure, honestly. I'm kind of feeling either a Metamorphosis or Steam and Soot. Huh. Yeah, there's not, like, a special one like there was before. I think I already did a metamorphosis. Oh, no, I didn't. A Zaylor Scarred, Interlude in Red and Gold, A Lost Love, A Narrow Escape. Worst Things Happen at Z, A Mentor. Um... Hmm... You know, let's do a metamorphosis. Let's see who we become. You can no longer be the person you were told to be. Your old life would have ground you beneath it. You had to change. Was the change slow or sudden? A gradual growth you changed by inches, your new self growing from the roots of the old. It was only after when you looked back that you saw how far you'd come. A blank slate. In order to become what you needed to be, you abandoned your old life. You cast it aside, as a snake must shed its skin. Um, I feel like a gradual growth is probably a lot healthier, just overall. Yeah. The 10,000 streams. Alright, where are we? Damn. We're really fucking into it. Portside's font. And this is really the way to level. Is doing the splorin. Splorin does that shit for ya. Alright, bat. Be fucking useful for once. Well, I can't exactly say that you weren't useful, but I also can't say that you were. Given that this is basically the only way I could have gone. Ugh. Good night. A fungal fragment. In sky suits and spore mask, your crew hauls a porous asteroid aboard. The top half is veiled by a mesh of fungus, like minty crinoline. Uh, lichen of all shades cling to the underside of the rock in an iridescent coating. Gain supplies, but also terror. Reduce your terror. Harvest the lichen. Ugh. Um, I'm okay on supplies. Let's reduce terror. 
Probably better. Because it's edible, it's a dangerous shipping. Destroying it may give the crew some cheer. The crew lays a trail of gunpowder from the inner door to the fungus. You light a match, set the trail ablaze, and slam the door. The flash of heat is immense. The spores burn ferociously. You can hear a high-pitched wail, almost a scream. He had air, perhaps, that was trapped in the fragment's pores. Your crew cheer. Well, now I feel like a dick. <gasps> I can can! Scoop! Oh my god. Oh, I've been waiting for this day. Oh. What a frab just day. Kalu. Kale. He chortled in his joy. What the fuck? Hello. Approaching the Parzifal. The engine drifts unhappily through the sky. Its hull has been split by an eruption of corpse white fungus from inside. The name Parzifal can be made out in brass letters on its sign. The first engine through the avid horizon, a navigator whispers, London's pride. He was captained by Lieutenant Commander Percy Blythe, and her mission was to chart new horizons beyond Albion, but she never came back. Okay. Board the Parzifal, what happened to the first engine in the high wilderness? Its doors are sealed, its lights dim, it drifts in the currents, mangled by fungal extrusions. Bolt cutters and prey bars are required to break the outer door. Its locking mechanism is antiquated and slickened with an oily substance. You wrench the door open and are immediately greeted with a cloud of yellowing spores. Your vision blurs just as your navigator torches them, igniting the air with burning fungus. A few gas lights flicker on the walls. The scratchy sounds of a gramophone can be heard. On thee our hopes we fix. God save us all. Okay. Spores drift through broken carriages like dying fireflies. Recruitment posters bearing her renewed majesty's face molder on the walls. Music scratchy, but distant, echoes through the empty carriages. A great wall of pulsing fungus separates the back of the engine from the front. Uh. Enter the captain's cabin. Uh. Yeah. In the first designs for London's engines, the captain always roomed towards the back of the train for their protection. Plush seats surround a decaying paper mat placed on a mahogany table. Drinks, some floating with mildew, have been poured in glasses around the table. Maps hang from sprouting fronds like peeling wallpaper. Spores float gently through the room. Logbooks lie scattered around the table. None date from after 1897. Ooh, so... Nine years ago. The engine's destination was to be Trader's Wood. The last entry regards a stop at Hybras, which they named Hybrasil. Something was brought on board. The captain's bunk has collapsed in a pile of rotten wood and infected bed sheets, wet with fungal growths. Still more majestic shalt thou rise, more dreadful from each foreign stroke, as a loud blast that tears the sky serves but to root thy native oak. Investigate the armory. An explorer engine like the parts of all would have been stocked for all eventualities. The solid iron walls of the armory are stained in a rod with sporing bodies. Walkers hang open, revealing decaying and antiquated sky suits. The old design with thermal chest plates and brass buttons for fastenings. Silver over your crew coo appreciatively, but back away when a prodding of one suit reveals a fruiting colony of golden black mushrooms has sprouted within. Amongst the outdated and unused weaponry, you uncover a trove of novels. Fanciful stuff, but all concerned with the possibilities of space travel and the interaction between modern man and the alien. Some talk of Alexander and some of Hercules, of Hector and Lysander, and such great names as these. But of all the world's great heroes, there's none that can compare. With a toe, row, 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 row to the British Grenadiers. Reach the fungus! Shivering spasm and festering fungus separate the front of the train from the rest. The only way forward is through. You organize your hardiest stokers into a rota, slowly but steadily widening the gap between the pallid walls of quivering fungal flesh. The, smile, the smell is direful, as are the ominous bulges protruding from the mushroom bulk. Thanks to your capable dis direction, however, a wide path is cleared straight through the fungus, bisecting it like two lungs separated by the trachea. You pass through, unharmed. Here come the grenadiers, my boys, who know no doubts of, or fears. They then sing toe row, 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 the British grenadiers. The front of the engine is even more infected with sprouting mushrooms and sporal fungal growths. The engine room lies ahead, seemingly the source of the persistent movement. Before that, however, is a haze of spores rendering the corridor ahead entirely noxious. For the crew cabins! Locomotives as old as these, the crews were always assigned bunks near the engine room. The sounds of the gramophones are louder here. Battered metal and tormented wood paneling comprise the confines in which the crew dwelled. Jubby toadstools round as pastries dot the cramped bunk beds. Mementos of home are scared about the fruiting debris. Slim volumes of Arnold and Blake, vials of honey, and engravings of simple domestic scenes can be found under every bunk. 
You also uncover a little tally chart on a folded up bit of paper. It seems the crew were organizing a whip round for their commander's retirement present. It's held on a plot of land on Port Prosper. Oh. And when the siege is over, we to the town repair. The townsmen cry, hurrah, boys, here comes a grenadier. Reverse the sporing carriage. Rooting sacks send clouds of vitriolic orange into the air. Passing through will be hazardous to the health. The engine room is just beyond. You go alone. Your crew disappear behind you, lost in a haze of orange and gold. Above, sacks of sporing fungus encrusted to the metalwork begin to erupt. Showers of spore and viscous liquids render the terrain still more hazardous. You feel a particular sensation. Your hands tingle as though wishing to reach out to touch the fungus, as though for one more drink. You increase your speed. There's a cry behind you. You turn to see one of your crew. A particularly distractible signaler has entered the miasma after you. Her hands hover over a mound of virulent gold fungus as though transfixed. Ah, oh, perhaps there's time to save her. You call out, risking spores entering your mouth and begin to run. Your signaler flinches and draws back just as the fungus pops, emitting into an iridescent cloud. You see briefly an image of an old marshy place bedecked with sprawling fungus. A large tower of wobbling mushroom. A word enters your head. Mother. You come to with your signaler crouched over you. You send her back to safety. You're fine. You're fine. You press on. When Britain first at Heaven's command arose from out the Azure Main, this was the charter of the land, and guardian angels sang this strain. The engine room is before you. Light and music spill from under the door, queasy and persistent. Enter the engine room. The thick steel door is scored with bullet holes and is held in place by tendrils of ropey white fungus. As you approach, you notice the damage done to the walls, riddled with bullets, old stains on the carpet. An attack was mounted on the engine room. You can hear music loud and clear from inside. An eerie green light pours through the hinges like flood water. You push open the door. The engine is room is as cold as a sunless sky. Your breath hangs in long chains before you. The boiler is off. The infernal gramophone sits atop the boiler. The music is no better for being closer to it. Before you lies a dance macabre of fungus and corpses, hand and frond. On the wall, suspended by fungus, is a body in a captain's uniform. Investigate the engine room. The corpses bear bullet wounds. They are unmarred by fungus, decaying in peace. Amongst the rank insignia, you spot a first officer, a chief engineer, and a conductor. All died violent deaths. There are far too few to amount to a full crew. The boiler, a battered, antiquated, wheezing contraption, stands silent and broken. Strips of iron hang in front of it, as though it had suffered an explosion. Inside, you find fungus amidst the ashes. Bumps and clusters of tendrils that sprout from the charcoal. When burnt, the spores would have infected the whole engine. Still more majestic shalt thou rise, more dreadful from each foreign stroke, as the loud blast that tears the skies serves but to root thy native oak. Examine the captain's corpse. Here lies all that remains of Lieutenant Commander Percy Blythe. The corpse of the finest officer of his generation hangs from the wall, suspended by loops of pale fronds. His skin is sallow, and strands of golden fungus crawl beneath it. His eyes open. Percy Blythe looks down on you. Blue fruiting mushrooms speckle his beard. Next to him, the gramophone crackles out dreary anthems of years past. His mouth opens too wide as he speaks. His jaw cracks. Here come the grenadiers, my boys, who know no doubts or fears. They sing toe row, 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 the British grenadiers. Suspended from chains of fungus, Percy Blythe begins to stir, improbably alive. He fixes his gold-flecked eyes at you as his mouth begins to move as though wanting to speak. Listen to him. Somehow, he is alive. He groans, his mouth opens impossibly wide, and a cloud of yellow spores emerge. I am all that's left. An oily liquid begins to drip from his left eye. I am a child of the grave garden. His voice alters, becoming more clipped, more static, like that of the voices on the gramophone. I am Lieutenant Commander Percy Blythe, Captain of the Parsifal. My task was to explore the wilderness and return home with new discoveries. He groans as though weeping. I am all that remains. I want to go home. Send her victorious, happy and glorious, long to reign over us. Lieutenant Commander of the Parzifal has survived whatever befell his engine. He is the key to understanding whatever occurred here. Ooh. Ask him what happened here. How did the Parzifal end up in this condition? We met the children on a hybrid. I'm just gonna do normal voice because that one that I did earlier is hard to do for long periods of time. We met the children on a high brass. We sought to know each other. Wanted to go to the wood. Wanted to see what was kept from us. Percy is drooling as he speaks. The gramophone clicks as yet another patriotic dirge begins to play. Percy Blythe struggles in his bonds, pulling himself up to stand a little straighter. We made contact on high brass. The fungus was so bright, so beautiful. His eyes shine gold. I brought it aboard. God forgive me. 
I wanted the crew to see, to know. Oil leaks from those hollow eyes. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Some came willing. Others refused to join us. We had to. He breaks off into silence, staring away into the middle distance. Still more majestic shalt thou rise, more dreadful from each foreign stroke. As the loud blast that tears the sky serves but to root thy native oak. What happened to him? How can he be alive? Percy Blythe launches into a long meandering slurred story of children and gardens of a cruel king who needed but did not love his subjects, despite their love for him, of knowledge denied and growth checked, of tyranny and freedom, of grief and betrayal and longing. The music bursts into sudden life. Percy jerks and fixes you with an infected eye. I was stupid. I thought we would be welcome here. And we were. We were welcomed. We were loved. The children, the verdants, they wanted us. He begins to sob. He has a sad, squelching sound. Something of the man remains. Yeah. You approach gingerly, fishing for a handkerchief in your pocket. Reaching up, you begin to dab at the oily tears of scoured Lieutenant Commander's face. Beneath the grime, you can see Percy's flesh is remarkably well preserved, save for the vibrant tendrils of golden fungus running beneath the skin. Thank you, he whispers. What does he want now? Can he even go home? Lieutenant Commander Percy Blythe lets out a low moan and slumps forward. The chains of fungus adjust to accommodate this despair. Home, he slurs like a drunk man de demanding another drink. On high brass, mother spored us there. She sent out her children across the stars to learn. The traitors would. We were forbidden from entering there, but now its king is dead. But this craft failed before we could arrive. The uh, body jerks as though shocked. Percy's face rises to face you. London, he rasps. London. And the parts of all still fly. No. The lieutenant commander hisses, his eyes rolling in his head. Sabotage, mutiny, ignorance, no fuel. The children too greedy, spread too fast, like fire. The engine is broken, the crew all gone. I am alone. His head lolls, as though his neck were broken. Here's a health unto her majesty, with a fa la 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 confusion to her enemies. Beside his fate, this cannot continue. Lieutenant Commander Percy Blythe, decorated hero of London forces. First captain through the avid horizon, gazes at you. Slack-jawed and unseeing. Please, he rasps. Takes me home. Or finish this. He twitches. We just want to know what was kept from us in Traitor's Wood. Why did our king not love his children? On thee our hopes we fix. God save us all. Lithe hangs listless in front of you, apparently exhausted. His head lolls and his gaze is dull. Was to be done. Um... Oh, God... No one need ever know what happened here. It might be mercy. Return him to mother. Bring him home. Let him complete his last mission. The man clearly only has one thing that he wants. And it want, it's going to Trader's Wood. Let him complete his last mission. The remnant of Percy Blythe does not appear to register your response. His head bobs with the tilting of the locomotive. You begin t cutting the body down. Is a task only made more difficult by the discovery that most of the far wall is in fact a rubbery sort of mushroom whose weak yellow flesh is entirely embedded in Blythe's back. You are forced to cut down a whole section of the wall, exposing the metal shell of the Parzifal, and carry Blythe out upon it. On board your engine, he mutters and twitches, as though diminished by the separation. You leave the Parzifal drifting alone in the sky. Okay. Jesus Christ. Uh. Well, this is not where I expected this to go. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, this sure ain't where... Jesus Christ. Hi. Fuck you. Uh. Uh. I am very much stuck here. Okay. Hey, fuck you. Fuck you. Oh damn! I got him! Nice. Um, see, having parts gain hull? Yeah, I should probably just gain hull. Nice! Ooh, the parts of hull's not looking good. Beautiful wings of fungal secretions. I guess. Ugh. Okay. Oh! Shit, we're back to Heineken. 
Okay. Well, damn. Hello, Heineken. Wait. Wait. Does that mean that there's nothing? Oh, wait, no, there's a side passage up there. Okay. Um, do I want to go to Trader's Wood real quick before... No. No. If I go to Trader's Wood, we're never going to get to Lustrum. Okay. Fuck y'all. I don't love the fact that you're trying to murder me. And frankly, I find it downright offensive. Boom, bitch. Suck dick. Haha, -ha, you tried to kill me, but I killed you harder. Where am I actually delivering the bronze wood? Poor Prosper. God damn. So literally Lustrum, I'm just dropping by for the port report. Fucking I didn't want this. Fuck you. Ugh. Now break of heart sickness. Ah, oh, fine. Break out the brandy, the fills and shit. All supplies in the sky story. Okay, where am I going? Going this way. Salome's fall. Fuck! I hate scribe spinsters. I hate combat. Hey, that worked out pretty good. I mean, I still took some damage, but... I think it was just from my thing exploding, and not from the Scribe Spinster, so... Fuck me. Can you fuck off? Kindly. Am I almost at... Yeah, okay. I'm almost at the Lustrum turnoff. I am at the Lustrum turnoff, actually. Goddamn. Brain hurdy. I'm gonna fucking litter this place like a goddamn minefield. If you dare come follow me, you are going to shit your fuck. I should probably just have killed it, honestly. But at the same time, like, I don't really wanna. The hassle. Much work. Besides, I'm almost at Lustrum, anyways. And then after Lustrum. Drop by Carillon for a quick port report. And then we're good. Don't break good. Yay. Yay. Beautimus. Hello, Lustrum. I, th there's something about Lustrum's aesthetic that I really, really like. In the overworld, at least. I don't know exactly what it is, but I dig it. Uh, the O'Brien Factory... Uh, leave. Yeah, I don't really care about that situation. I want... Uh, I've got everything that I need. Join the celebration. If I could drop some terror, that would be nice. Thank you. Explore Lustrum, write a port report every goddamn time. Uh, hang the man pub, seek a claim of your own, visit the Windward Company. James County House. Yeah, I don't have anything to do there. Um, honestly, at this point, I just need to drop some terror and buy some shit. Yeah, let's just... Uh... Listen to gossip about geodes. That's fucking it. I forgot. That doesn't actually do anything. Hello, Ministry Approved Literature. Okay, this is literally being handed to me on a silver platter. Like, I, I, I can't not, you know? You know, you know, you know, you know, you get it. Hi. Cool. Well, did I get my port report? I forget already. Port reports. Lustrum. Yep. Hi. Bye. I did what I came here to do. Phew. Now we're just off to Carillon, and then to Port Prosper, and then to the Blue Kingdom Relay. 
Hello, Kentankerai. Fuck you, sir. You're a nasty bitch. I'm glad you're gone. Oh, there's another one. Up here. I'm hot on its trail. Yeah, there he is. Gross. Fuck him. He's gonna drop a couple of these just in case. God, I love those. Favorite gun. Best gun. Butt gun. Pew pew. Eh. Yeah, we should be able to get to Port Prosper quite easily, and then I think in Port Prosper I can drop you off at the bank. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think I can. I think I can. Sullivan's Sight. Sullivan's Sight, I need to go hard south. Remember there was something about O'Sullivan's Sight. Oh, hello. You look like a tackety. Yeah, I think you are. And then we head south here to get to Carillon, and we are going to have so much. Oh, never mind. I'm going too far. We are going to have so much slack when it comes to fuel and supplies. We are doing great. Victory shot, just to say that we are doing fantastic. And then, yeah. Boom. We're coming We're coming close to the end of the circumnavigation. Which is the, 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 the cosmo... Circumcosmigation. The circum... Cir, the circumcosmo navigation. Nav... No, navicosmigation. Oh, it's Uncertain Embrace. Absolute favorite piece of the whole soundtrack. There's a reason I picked it for the uh, end slate. I just, I, I love this piece. I want to get sheet music for it and learn to play it. Port report every time. Don't need that. Travel around Carillon. Don't need this. Forgot about the rubbery man. Ooh. Ooh. Steal an offering from the burrower below. The, the devils have placed a few trinkets at its feet. I feel like this is a terrible idea, but I'm going to do it. Stealing from the gods. You reach down and pocket one of the offerings. If anything notices, it makes no sign of it. Oh, I'm so fucked. Oh, I'm gonna die. It's gonna be hilarious. Um, yeah, I'm good, honestly, for feeling supplies. I've got my port report. That's what I came here to do. Now we're gonna hit Port Prosper. I'm gonna get everything I need in terms of paperwork and barrels of hours. And then we're hitting the Blue Kingdom, baby! Maybe I'll have the money to uh, get a few more, whatchamacallits, upgrades. Wow. You know your brain not working when you can't remember the word for upgrade. I really want a saying. I really, really want a saying so I can get all of the shit that I find. I'm so tired of not being able to pick up things that have a saying. Okay, not far. I am not ending this episode until we are at the Blue Kingdom Transit Relay. Maybe until we're on the other side, actually. Yeah. I'll pop out the other side, be like, oh shit, what up? And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. Do something fun. Yeah, I know, I know. I'll pop out the other side, do the same thing as I did with the Brabazon work world, where I just kind of, like, showed up. But then I'll cut it there. Because otherwise this episode is going to be real long. Okay, wait. How many... One, two, three, four. Okay. 
Yeah, I know. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So the mines take up a little bit more heat. Hi, Port Prosper. Good to fucking see ya. You fucking cunt! God damn it. I did not deserve that one point of damage. Explore. Get a fucking poor report. God damn. Take tea at the Admiral Nelson. Um, engage in point gossip. I think this drops my terror. Never mind. Vision. Of transport to settlers. Uh, I have 16 sky stories. Yeah. Okay. Transport a settler. Please beat a new lustrum. God damn it. Ugh. Deliver settler to lustrum. Ugh. Oh, I probably should have read that. Whoops. The other company house. Deliver your port reports. Okay. Four fuel, three supplies, 80, so 80 sovereigns. God damn it. You guys pay shit. Longitude gossip, ministry stamped permit. Yeah. Ministry stamp permit. Um. Yeah. Cool. Um, and that is fucking it. I guess I can get Salon Stewed Gossip. What? You need five? Just for Salon Stewed Gossip? Oh my god. Garbage. Garbage. I had 16. Oh my god. Wow. Hot garbage. I guess I'll get some salon stewed gossip. Jesus Christ. Um, anything else to do here? Visit the Windward Company? No, fuck you. No one likes you. Bizarre. Anything? F right. This is where I sell. I thought that it was a place to buy it. My bad. I've gained 10 fortune stove pipes. Uh, ministry stamp perm. I got an. Mm, I got another one. Ooh, paint of stained glass. Ooh. Where needs panes of stained glass? What? Oh. Okay. Uh, titania. You know what? I need five. So, like, fuck it, right? Oh, shit. Oh, wait, oh. Uh, um, 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 oh. Why do I have a gourd of Corster nectar? Why do I have that? Unclear. Instructions in clear. Dick cotton ceiling fan. Okay, I'm gonna... Can I sell shit? God damn it. Well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna sell one fuel and one supplies. Because I don't need to tell. And admittedly, I'm losing 30 bucks. But at the same time, I want to get these. That's really what it boils down to. Nelson's Emporium. I'm good on fuel and supplies. Stories, Queen Cross Station. Anything else to do? Uh, right. And at some point, I'm going to need hours. Fuck. How long is it to get back to New Winchester? Not that long. I'll... I'll... Bite it. Oh, God damn it. Yeah, I need... Two barrels of unseasoned hours. I think I just need two. To get through. Okay. Let's go. And let's head on back... To New Winnie. Yep. New Winchester. Straight on. We'll pass by the memorial to the unknown rat. 
And then it's straight on. I'll drop off a port report for the Tackities because they pay better than these motherfuckers. And, um... Yeah. Then we'll head through the relay. Oh, this is exciting. Now I just need to figure out where Eleutheria is. And where the Eleutheria relay is. Unless Eleutheria is a place I can only get to through Albion or the Blue Kingdom. But, like, I feel like it would be weird to have it only accessible through there. Unless it's, like, end game. That would actually make sense why I haven't heard of it until now. Because if it's end game content, then uh, blah, 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 blah. It wouldn't be accessible from the Reach. Alrighty, rat. Ooh, wait. You say there was something yummy over here? Oh, it's one of these. Doc! Tell the men to stop! Wait, what? Those who live so far beyond the edge of blah blah blah. scouting a house in a ramshackle bar and a cloud of dust rises from the yard. Two men are fighting. I needed 14 crew? Holy shit. Tell the men to stop. They roll on the floor, grasping for purchase and shouting complaints. Men are graying and scarred. Their arms are brown as teak and gnawed with muscle. They strike indiscriminately, but thus far ineffectually. As far as you can tell, they're fighting over what color to paint a shared outhouse. Uh, of course we separate them. This is nonsense. They are too old to be selling their problems this way. Especially out here, far from medical aid. Neither man thanks you, but they are more sulky than angry. Even on this far, lonesome rocks, men still find cause to fight. You suppose the consistency is reassuring. I guess. Goddamn. Alright. Yeah, straight east of here, well... Like, east-southeast of here is Memorial to the Unknown Rat. Let's get rid of a bit of our terror. And then... I don't think there's anything else between us and New Winchester. Which is tragic, honestly. Like, I could use a few more wonders. It's because my terror is sitting at 42. Which, admittedly, my own fault. But, you know, fuck it, right? Is that it? It just drops at like 9%? Garbage. G -g -g garbage Okay, wait, I need to go down here. Man. It's almost like terror is a difficult thing to get rid of in this game or some bullshit like that. It's almost like it's a negative resource to be managed. Blech. Gross. Shoot the guns for safety. Okay, and then we go through here. I'm sorry that I pull things up so much. It's just, like, I want to make sure I'm going the right way. Because if you go the wrong way, it takes a really long time to go around. And there's so many more obstacles than in Sunless Sea. And frankly, like, sometimes it all blurs together. It's just a little unclear as to what's what, who's where, why's how, and what the fuck. You know? It be how it do. And you don't really get a good sense of ping. Ooh. Hi. Retrieve. In supplies balls of terror. Reduce your terror. Destroy it. Do another. Scrum. Up. 27%. Not the worst. Makes me happy if it would drop more, but it didn't, so I've got something at least. Looking on the bright side, you know? You gotta look on the bright side of things. Alright, I've got almost $3,000, which is pretty fucking spicy. Alrighty, Victory Hall, let's fuck him up. I mean, like, not the war effort. I literally do not care about the war. Fuck you. I literally do not care who wins the war. I want to know why the stars are dying. Like, fuck people. Stars. You know? The report reports. Alrighty. Mixed and mixed. Alright. Yeah, they gave me a lot more dollars. Wow. 
Savage Secret or Otherworldly Artifact. Um, what do I have in regards to both of those? Uh, Savage Secret. Oh, that's the Lawn Stewed Gossip. Where's Savage Secret? I have four Savage Secrets. Um, do I have another worldly artifact? I have three other worldly artifacts. So I might as well. Uh, yeah, I might as well get another worldly artifact. Or I could save. Oh, wait, no. That's all they can give me. Haha, <laughs> never mind. Alrighty. Let's fucking go. Time to hit New Winnie. And then. The Blue Kingdom. Transit. Relay. I have two ministry stamp permits and two barrels of ours. I swear to God. If this isn't enough to get me through the transit relay, I'm going to shit my fuck. Um, deliver sapling knots. Nice. Little bit of extra moolah. Uh, promise of days. And uh, no. Okay, we're good. Repair your locomotive. Absolutely. Fully repair. Ah, uh, 69 sovereigns. Nice. I've got all of the crew that I can possibly wish for. Loot you for Traders Wood. I'm just I'm I'm gonna fucking claim it because I've got that. To fucking deliver five approved literature. Cool. I did it. Perjurance and Warlaby Juxtamare. Whatever the f wherever the fuck that is. Um, I would really like to get more shit. Oh, right. I should bank shit. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I can sell the Chorister Nectar and I need to keep the hours. Sell. Fucking sell. There we go. Um, Wolvesy Engine Yard. Ugh, $16,000. Christ almighty. Anything I can do to upgrade my space boat. Ooh, can I buy the Beulah? Beulah. 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 Um. Ah, uh, the Brita Mart. Uh, can I get better shielding? Do I already have cozy cabins? I have sensible plumbing. Hmm. Okay. Grimalkin. Wait and winch and pulley. The sneeze lurker. So not really. There's no real good way for me to upgrade. Yeah. My shit right now. So let's just resupply and get on our way. You know what? Let's go five and five. Let's do this shit up. Let's make sure we are so fucking ready for the Blue Kingdom that it is impossible for us to get too terribly fucked up. Just gonna fucking bomb New Winchester with my nuclear poops. Ooh. Terror 3. Does docking in New Winchester just drop me? A certain amount because if I drop to three I was at 27 roughly when I rounded the corner for Victory Hall so I'd probably be at like hmm wait yeah I'd probably be around 28 because unless I'm near a horror it doesn't go up too too quick oh never mind it does never mind okay so it probably drops me 30 percent I'm already at five, six. Jesus Christ. Okay, yeah, then it was probably at 33 by the time I got to New Winchester. I was going to say, like, oh, it probably only went up 1%. Or it probably just lost 25. Nah. Nah, it's way better than I thought it was. Jesus Christ, it's up to seven. Fuck me. I just want to go to the Blue Kingdom, man. I just want to get that sweet, sweet exploring XP.
Alrighty, submit the paperwork for a travel permit. You'll need references of acceptable character, and of course, there is a processing fee. How much? Five hundred dollars. Holy shit. I guess. The official considers you from behind his desk at the relay gate. Hmm. A thoughtful nod. You must be cautious for the Empire's safety. He praises you. We need to be certain you're the right sort of captain. Picks up the coin purse you place on the counter and considers it's half. Clearly you are. He bears a tobacco-tinted smile as he prepares your permit. The paper is white as lamb's wool and thick enough to make an undignified wobbling noise when he hands it over. Okay. Travel to the Blue Kingdom. Ooh. Uh, let's travel second class. You have enough hours for your journey and a little extra for the station. A donation of hours to convince the officials to wave you through. The official cracks open a barrel and tastes an hour crystal. The hours will, he concedes, do. Enclosed in your engine's pocket of hours, it's hard to say how long the passage will take. Unseasoned hours tend to be melancholy and anxious. Your journey is likely to be wearing. The machinery grinds and stirs. Steam vents. The sigils of the edifice burn with sullen fire. A force like a great hand seizes your engine. It is not the date that it was. And we are returning from whence we came. To the Blue Kingdom. Oh boy. Oh, but your locomotive has a horn. You may toot it. It does nothing. Where the fuck is the horn button? I want to toot the horn. Alrighty. Blue Kingdom, baby. Alright. And, whoa. Wait. Is it just me, or is this a lot smaller already? It's like, I've barely gone anywhere, and like a chunk of the map was already clear. He says he has enemies among the dead. Sky Barnett! Whoa! Yeah, this is definitely smaller. The Toll Tower. Alrighty, well, we've made it to Sky Barnett. And I think that this is a pretty cool place to cut it. Pretty good place to cut it. Pretty cool place to cut it, too. Whatever the fuck. But, yeah. Next time we will uh, proceed into the Blue Kingdom. And see what the fuck is going on there. But for now, thank you all so much for following my playthrough of Sunless Skies. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye now.